After intensive consultations with the world's airlines, the Boeing 777 was conceived to provide the most payload and range capability in the medium-sized aircraft category. This airplane is not designed on paper. There are no drawings on a piece of paper. Uh, all the drawings are in a computer. But uh, this was the first attempt to be exclusive with it, you know, do everything uh, by digital definition. So it was a groundbreaker of a program that way. We utilized a system that allowed us to create entire, the entire airplane in three-dimensional form on a computer database. And we also devised a computing system that would allow us to put those parts together and search them three-dimensionally for any interferences that might exist, what the relationship of one part was to another, put the whole airplane together that way. This is also the first time that we've used what we call design-build teams. And what it is is that we have the people that design the airplane sitting with the people that are in charge of building the airplane and of course sitting also with the people that are going to fly and use the airplane. And we actually had three pilots assigned full-time and a flight engineer as a matter of fact assigned full-time in the design process early on, um, years before we flew. And when you have thousands of engineers working on an airplane one of the problems is communication is how, how does the structural engineer know what the electrical engineer has put, has stuffed into the airplane. And you can't know that unless you go and look and open drawings and unroll drawings. This way, uh, since the, the drawings are in the computer, the electrical engineer can call the particular portion of the airplane onto his screen. And he can see where the wire would go. And call the particular portion of the airplane onto his screen and he can see where the wire would go. Now what that allowed us to do was eliminate what we used to have were hardware full-scale mock-ups where we'd actually produce in aluminum, in plywood, in, in plastic, any, way, any method possible. It, uh, it took a, an immense effort. We had eight mainframes interconnected to handle all the data flow, and that was the largest computer database system in the world at the time it was doing it was doing that job. So, and then we had to train everybody. You know, we had 7,000 engineers that hadn't used that system before, so they eventually, uh, during that program, had to be trained to utilize this whole new method of design. So it was a terrific undertaking. As you go through the factory and you see the airplane come together, everything fits. The parts go together, uh, more so than ever before. And it was amazing when we put the first airplane together, what we had achieved. We didn't really realize if it was going to work or not until you actually do it. Boeing engineers took advantage of new space age materials and design technology during the construction of the B-777. A new improved 7055 aluminum alloy offers greater strength and improved corrosion and fatigue resistance than existing alloys. The fuselage, circular in cross-section, is large enough to accommodate a spacious passenger cabin, plus a large capacity hold. Advanced composite materials, carbon fibers and resins are used in secondary structures to reduce weight. The B777 has the most aerodynamically efficient airfoil ever developed for subsonic commercial aviation, allowing quicker climbing and higher cruising. The main landing gear, the largest for a commercial airline, features a standard two-post arrangement, but with six wheel trucks instead of four. This allows better weight distribution and more economical braking. All three major engine manufacturers have developed new improved turbofans for the B777, resulting in excellent fuel efficiency and a craft that is as quiet as a smaller airplane. 
The flight deck incorporates advanced liquid crystal display screens, which generate less heat and therefore don't need complex air conditioning. Control and maneuvering commands are transmitted through a fly-by-wire system, a first for a Boeing commercial aircraft. The control computers and systems communicate via Boeing's patented two-way digital data bus, the ARINC-629. Fly-by-wire also saves weight and simplifies construction. three years we were flying the airplane in what we call the systems integration lab where we had two simulators where we had the actual systems of the airplane flying uh, as we flew so we were actually exercising uh, um, systems or pieces that would go on the airplane eventually the real reward was after flying the simulator for several years and getting in the airplane and, and finding out that's what we've been flying for the last two or three years None of us but the pilots flew on the very first flight. Two people. It's an immense relief when you see that airplane take off for the first time. So there's a real release of exuberance when that happens. As a two-engine passenger aircraft, a thorough test program was necessary for the B777 to obtain ETOF's extended range twin engine operations approval. All B777s were designed to be ETOF's capable, but to ensure the highest possible levels of reliability, it was put through rigorous testing, more than twice the number of test hours ever flown by a commercial jetliner. And on May the 30th, 1995, it became the first airplane in aviation history to earn FAA approval to fly ETOFs upon service entry. Yeah. 